Lost war memorials. And as you can see from the title slide, there's a lot of them. Um, going to base this talk mainly around ones from the early 1920s, 1920 and um, just before and just after. But there's so many of them that I, I had to pick and choose which ones to use. So I've generally gone with ones where I know when the memorial was unveiled or dedicated, and I know I have a, a newspaper photograph of the memorial. Um, so some of the memorials that are actually on this title screen won't feature. Over the century since the end of the Great War, a considerable number of memorials and roles of honour commemorating service and sacrifice in the Great War have been lost. When I'm using the word lost, that could mean physically lost, or it could just mean that we don't know where they are. Uh, many memorials, particularly churches in North Belfast, the memorials were lost when the buildings were destroyed during the German air raids of 1941. And there's some which I have photographs for, and there's some which I don't. There's some churches, um, for example, Clifton Street, Eglinton Street, McCrory Memorial. There's no record. I've, I've never seen a photograph of the memorial or the roles of honour in those particular churches. All the memorials are, were lost when church congregations closed or relocated or joined with another congregation. For example, Donegal Square Methodist Church. There was a memorial tablet there. Nobody knows where it's gone. There's no um, photographic evidence of it that I've come across anyway. And other memorials were dumped in skips during renovations of church buildings. The most classic example of that, to my mind, would be Christ Church in Belfast at College Square, where the two war memorial tablets for the, the two world wars were dumped in a skip and they were retrieved from the skip by somebody else. I also know of the, the one, the uh, personal memorial for um, Pollock in St. Enoch's Presbyterian Church, which was recovered from a skip. So again, some people had a total disregard, disrespect for memorials and what they stood for. Um, some memorials re were removed from churches and have been placed in storage, but they are, to all intents and purposes, lost to the public because they're not accessible. And even with the passage of time, they may have been put into storage, but nobody now knows where they were put into storage and whether they were then later moved from that storage to another location. So as I said, this is going to be this talk's going to be looking at mainly ones where there's a, a newspaper photograph of the memorial tablet. I'm going to start off with Ulsterville Harriers Club. And this is a bit of an unusual one as well. Saturday, 25th of May, 1918, so before the end of the war, representatives of the Ulsterville Harriers Club visited the UVF hospital at Botanic Avenue. And that was located in premises that had been provided for by the Queen's University. Part of the hospital specialised in the treatment of men who had lost limbs, including the fitting of artificial limbs. Ulsterville Harriers endowed a bed in the lim limbless hospital and presented a memorial plaque naming 11 members of the club who had died during the war. So that's obviously 11 men who had died up to that point. There may well have been other members of the club who died in the, um, in the subsequent years of the war because obviously there's still another six months of fighting to go at that stage. Um, when the UVF hospital at Botanic Avenue closed, and I don't even know when that took place, it's not known what happened to this and other plaques that were put in that hospital. The same goes for the uh, UVF hospital out at Sydenham, um, at Craig Alvin House. There were bed plaques and memorials put in place there. And again, uh, there's no information, no details on what happened to those plaques, whether they were kept, whether they were put into storage, or whether they were just disposed of. I'm going to pick up one, as usual, I'm going to pick up one man from, from each location, from each memorial. This is Thomas Rowley Curlis, who was born on 3rd January 1876 at Home Street in the Windsor Ward. His parents were Thomas Curlis, who was a joiner, and Jane McConnell. He went by the name Roland, so although it's um, spelt Rowley on the birth certificate. He generally went by the name Roland. And he was employed as a plumber when he married Harriet Clark, a dressmaker on 31st May, 1898 at Fountainville Presbyterian Church off the Lisburn Road. Fountainville Presbyterian Church was down near the, the Sandy Row end of Lisburn Road, 
and it burnt down in the early 1920s and the congregation then merged with Donegal Road Presbyterian Church and the combined congregation took on the name Richview. So that's just over the, the Boyne, just over the bridge, the railway bridge on Donegal Road. Roland Harriet and their sons, Roland, aged eight, were living at Palestine Street in 1911. A second son, James Anderson Curtis, was born in October 1913 in South Australia to where Harriet and Roland Sr. had um, emigrated. Harriet Curtis, his wife, died in December 1913. Roland then enlisted in the South South Australia in South Australia with the Third Light Horse Regiment, and, 19, and that was on 19th August 1914. He was 37 years old when he enlisted. His mother, Jane Curtis of Beaver Place on the Orma Road, was named as his next of kin. He embarked from Adelaide on board HMS Australian Transport Port Lincoln on 22nd October 1914 and arrived in Egypt in December 1914. The ANZAC troops were stationed at various locations in Egypt whilst they underwent um, further training and he was stationed at Heliopolis until May 1915 when his unit was deployed to the Gallipoli Peninsula on 13th May. Trooper Roland Curlis was killed in action at Monash Valley on 19th May 1915 at the age of 39 and he's buried in the Shrapnel Valley Cemetery. He's also commemorated on the war memorial that stands outside Newton Breeder Presbyterian Church. The last name on the column, the last name on the memorial is unusual. It's Verisher, sorry, Antonio Verisher, who is a trooper with the Belgian cavalry. And he was killed in action on 27th July, 1917. I haven't been able to find out any information about him. He doesn't appear in the 1911 census, but it's quite possible that he moved, um, came to Ulster at some stage between 1911 and the start of the war and then returned to Belgium um, to, to serve his country. The second one isn't technically, well, it is a role of honour. Um, and this isn't a newspaper photograph, obviously, although this image did appear in the newspapers. And by July 1990, this mural had been painted to commemorate men from Carnan Street and District who had served in the Great War, that's in the Shankill area. I've not seen a photograph of sufficient resolution to enable the men, the names on the, the rolls that are um, hand-painted to, to each side of Sir Edward Carson. But even just looking at that image, you can see that there's a considerable number and you can see that it's subdivided into streets. So you've got Carnan Street on the, the, at the top of the first panel and then there's other street names um, on the two panels and sometimes it's not even possible to to make out those but again if you look at the tops of the two rules of honour there's an um, an intricate set of paintings of flags and um, the crown and so forth so it's a, in its day it must have been a fantastic piece of work how long it lasted don't know um, but certainly as a gable end mural um, it's I think it's one of probably the only one that I've come across anyway in, in Ulster where a gable end wall has been used to create a role of honour. Obviously I can't make out the, the names on the roles of honour, but what I've done is I've picked out one or two um, men from Carnan Street who died during the Great War and they would presumably be named, would have been named on this role of honour. And it's the Thompson brothers. Um, James Thompson, a foundry labourer, and Sarah Thompson, a Kennedy of Carnan Street, lost two wars, two sons, during the Gallipoli campaign. Both sons are commemorated on the memorial tablet for Nelson Memorial Presbyterian Church, which is displayed here. And that is currently um, held in the West Belfast Orange Hall. Private Hugh James Thompson was born on 22nd September 1895 at Island Bourne near Antrim and he worked in Mackey's Foundry in 1911. He was posted the 1st Battalion Royal Enniskilling Fusiliers on the Gallipoli Peninsula on the 24th of May 1915. He died of wounds on board um, His Majesty's Hospital Ship Letitia on 11th July 1915 at the age of 19. He was buried at sea and is commemorated on the Hellas Memorial on the Gallipoli Peninsula. 
His brother, Private John Thompson, was born on 25th December 1889 at Akadui in County Londonderry, and he was serving with the 1st Battalion Royal Dublin Fusiliers when he was killed in action on 25th April during the disastrous landings at Cape Hellas. Um, a battalion of the Royal Dublin Fusiliers and 1st Battalion of the Royal Munster Fusiliers both landed at the same beach and they were so badly um, decimated or denuded in terms of numbers that by the end of the first day there were only enough um, active men left to form one battalion. So they became a merged battalion who were known as the Dubsters, Dub from Dublin Fusiliers and Sturs from Munster. He was 25 years old and he's buried in V Beach Cemetery on the Gallipoli Peninsula. On Sunday the 27th of July 1919, the Reverend Charles Frederick Darcy, Bishop of Down, Connor and Dromore, unveiled and dedicated the memorial windows commemorating the 20 men from the congregation of St. John's Church of Ireland on Laganbank Road. In the same service, Bishop um, Darcy also dedicated windows installed by Sir Frederick Moneypenny, MBOOBE, in memory of his parents. Sir Frederick Moneypenny was a, a leading light in the, the anti-home rule um, movement and he was also heavily involved in Belfast City Hall from um, a treasury point of view. Buried in Belfast City Cemetery as Peter McCabe will know. The two sets of two light windows were supplied by Warden Partners, one of the, the two major Belfast um, stained glass window manufacturers at that time. The wall memorial window depicts two angels in rich robes with ruby wings who are kneeling with clasped hands facing each other. Underneath, underneath is a panel listing the names of the fallen. There was also a memorial plate which listed 81 men from the congregation who had served in the Great War and had returned home. Uh, the congregation relocated to the Orangefield area in the mid-1930s. The windows weren't either remained in the, um, the building or they were removed and placed into storage. I was told by somebody that they put into storage in the crypt at St. Anne's Cathedral, but when I asked St. Anne's Cathedral, they said they had no storage space in the crypt for items such as that. So it's possible that they're down there but nobody knows they're there. The newspaper reports on the unveiling of the war memorial window do not provide the names and the newspaper photograph isn't sufficiently good to be, to be able to decipher the names. So we don't even have the names of the men that are on that memorial, unlike several others, which I'll be talking about in due course, where the newspapers reported the names and that way you start to build a picture. Balmoral Methodist Church, which was situated on Osborne Park, sometimes referred to as Osborne Park Methodist Church. Um, a brass memorial tablet um, of the men who from the congregation who served in the Great War was unveiled by the Reverend Pierce Martin on Sunday 4th January 1920. The brass tablet was mounted on oak and was made by Mr Joseph Mayers of Great Victoria Street and it listed um, 31 men from the congregation who had served, six of them having made the supreme sacrifice. This is Second Lieutenant David um, Moore Riddle, or Riddell possibly, and he was born on 20th March 1892 at Cromwell Street in the Botanic area to Henry Riddle and Mary Jane Moore. His father was a civil engineer and a member of Belfast Corporation and his two elder brothers were university lecturers at Queen's University. He was educated at Methodist College between 1901 and 1908, and then studied engineering at Queen's, graduating with a Bachelor of Science degree in 1912. He was in the engineering department at Belfast Corporation and received a commission in December 1914, and that was through the Officer Training Corps at Queen's University. He was deployed to 16th Battalion, the King's Liverpool Regiment in 1916 and was wounded at Trones Wood on 12th July 1916, the last day of the, bat of the Battle of Alber, the opening phase of the Battles of the Somme. 
Second Lieutenant Riddle died of septicemia at the Officers' Hospital at Upper Fitzwilliam Street in Dublin on 23rd September 1917 at the age of 25. He's buried in Belfast City Cemetery and is commemorated on the memorials for Queen's University, QUB Officers Training Corps and Belfast Corporation. As you can see, um, his name is on this panel here and it gives details of, of when he was wounded and so forth. But there's no Commonwealth War Graves headstone. The reason for that is his name had been added on to a pre-existing um, family memorial before Commonwealth or the Imperial War Graves Commission, as it then was, got round to documenting and installing headstones. And because he's already adequately commemorated on a memorial, it meant that they felt there was no need to install a separate memorial. And that was the way that the uh, Imperial War Graves Commission works, that if there's something there already, they don't bother, or they don't see the need to, to put in anything additional. Northeast Bar, a tablet was installed in the County Courthouse on Crumlin Road in memory of the members of the Northeast Bar who died in the war, in other words, barristers. The tablet was unveiled on 18th March 1920 by the Lord Chief Justice of Ireland, the Right Honourable Thomas Francis Maloney. In addition to prominent members of the bar in the legal professions, the ceremony was attended by the Lord Mayor of Belfast, who at that stage was William Frederick Coates, and two former Lord Mayors, Sir Crawford McCullough and Sir James Johnston. In a short speech, Mr Robert D. Murray, father of the North East Bar, said that 35 members had served and six men had died. The memorial itself is relatively plain brass tablet and for each fatality the rank, battalion and regiment and date of death and place of death are recorded. So although it's a, a plain memorial in terms of its design, it's very detailed in terms of the information that's contained on the memorial. Um, the current location of this memorial is not known. It may have been removed from the uh, county courthouse when it fell in, when it was ceased to be used. Um, it may be held somewhere or on display somewhere where the only people that have access to it or see it are members of the uh, the legal profession, barristers and judges and so forth. But I haven't been able to determine uh, definitively whether it survived and where it's currently located. A marble tablet was installed in the London Derry Courthouse in July 1919 to commemorate the four fatalities from the North West Bar and it's considerably more um, ornate. It's marble for starters so it's larger, it doesn't have as many names but it's still in situ in the courthouse and if you jump through the necessary hoops then you can get access to photograph it. You can get access to it at any time to look at it, but there are rules and regulations about taking photographs in and around courthouses for obvious security reasons. The last member of the Northeast Bar to die in the Great War was George Bestel Jenkinson Smith. His second forename is recorded on Commonwealth War Graves as Bostal, B-O-S-T-A-L-L, -L, but it's B-E-S-T-A-A-L, -L, both on the birth registration and on other documentation. He was born on 23rd July 1890 at Milltown House uh, in Lenaderg near Bam Bridge, and his parents were James David Smith and Charlotte Ann Jenkinson. He was educated at Pretoria School, um, Royal School down in Fermanagh, between 1903 and 1908, and then at Trinity College in Dublin. He obtained his commission on 25th August 1914 through the, through the Officers Training Corps and was posted to 6th Battalion Royal Irish Rifles. He participated in the landings at Anzac Cove on the Gallipoli Peninsula on 5th August 1915. And it's known that he was treated for wounds at the 19th General Hospital in Alexandria. Whilst his battalion was deployed to Salonika in October 1916, George Smith was a, a evacuated back home to the United Kingdom um, for convalescence following his wounding. He was subsequently posted to 2nd Battalion Royal Irish Rifles in France in November 1917, 
where he was wounded during the Cambrai operations. He held the rank of captain when he was killed in action on 22nd October 1918, aged 28, just a few weeks before the armistice. He is buried in the Harlebeck um, New British Cemetery in Belgium and is commemorated on a family memorial in Banbridge Town Cemetery. He's also commemorated on the Banbridge and District War Memorial, on the War Memorial tablet in St. Patrick Parish Church, and on the Roll of Honour for Banbridge Golf Club, which is depicted on the slide. On Sunday 25th April 1920, Major General the Right Reverend John Morrow Sims, moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, dedicated two memorial tablets at York Street Presbyterian Church. Inside the building, a tablet um, bore the names of 14 men from the congregation who had died. Outside the church, a tablet commemorated the 36 men from the Earl Street and District who had died. And you can see Major Sims there, um, the memorial, and you can probably just about make out at the top a set of crossed swords and the names of the people who died and the people who served. All those names are recorded in the newspaper articles, so we know who the fatalities were, we know who the men who served were, and that provides a historic record, even though the memorial itself is lost. This particular church, York Street Presbyterian Church, was destroyed during the German air raids, and both memorials were lost. York Street later joined with um, Castleton Presbyterian Church, further along on York Road, and it's now known as Alexandra Presbyterian Church. Private James McGahey Barclay. He was born on 16th April 1898 at Memel Street in the Pottinger Ward to Alexander Barclay and Sarah McGahey. The family lived in Foundry Street in 1901 and North Thomas Street in 1911 before moving to Earl Street by 1918. James Barclay was an apprentice sea rep, sea shipwright at the Workman Clark shipyard um, and he was working there when he enlisted in the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers. Due to his age he was placed in the 4th Battalion, a Reserve Battalion and was transferred to um, a company of the Machine Gun Corps and posted to 13th Company which was part of the 5th Division in 1916. He was serving with 13th Company when he was killed in action on 31st August 1916 during, during the attacks on High Wood, which was a phase in the Battles of the Somme, 1916. Private Barclay was 18 years old when he died, and he's commemorated on the Thiepville Memorial in France and on the Rolls of Honour for Rosemary Street Presbyterian Church and St. Enoch's Presbyterian Church. His name is not recorded on the Workman Clark Belfast Shipyard Memorial, and there's at least 90 men who have identified items where it reports that he was that these men were employed at workman club before the war this means that they were not physically in employment with workman clark at the start of the war or not or otherwise we don't know staying in the same sort of area of belfast on sunday the 9th of may 1920 the very reverend thomas gibson george collins dean of belfast cathedral dedicated several memorials in St. James Church, Church of Ireland, which is on the corner of Cliftonville Street, Cliftonville Road and Antrim Road. A rule of honour was erected by Mr. Andrew Alexander Clendinning, a linen merchant, and it listed 156 men from the parish who served in the Great, Great War. A bronze tablet erected by the parishioners listed the names of 30 men who had died during the Great War. Mary Kathleen Watson provided a communion to memory of her husband, the Reverend John Edmund Malone Watson, MC. John Watson was serving as a chaplain attached to the 21st Battalion Middlesex Regiment when he was injured whilst attending a wounded soldier. He died of his wounds on 10th April 1918 at the age of 31 and is buried in the Haverskirk British Cemetery at Nord in France. Like many churches in North Belfast, St. James's was badly damaged during the German air raid of 1941 and was extensively rebuilt in 1946. The tower and spire of the church are the only original elements to survive the bombing. 
The war-related memorials were, as far as I'm aware, lost during the German air raids. Four sons of Henry Arthur Newell and Helen Hunter Newell, formerly Ford, of Charrington Terrace on the Antrim Road served in the Great War. Henry Arthur Newell Sr. was a merchant tailor with premises on Royal Avenue. In 1911, the family was living at Brookvale Avenue, which is not far from Belfast Royal Academy. And Thomas was a manager of a sawmill and his three brothers were salesmen in the drapery, clothing and linen trade. Thomas Earls Newell, who you can see standing at the back, um, was born on 7th October 1886 at Belgrave Terrace and he served with the 26th Battalion Royal Fusiliers, which was a London regiment and that was one of the public schools battalions. Walter Newell, who's seated um, in the kilt, was born on 26th February 1889 at Eglantine Avenue in Belfast. He was a Lance Corporal when he was deployed to France with 6th Battalion Black Watch on 2nd May 1915. He was killed in action on 10th July 1915, aged 26, and is buried in the Rue David Military Cemetery at Flerbeau in France. George Frank Newell was born on 5th March 1891 at Woodland Avenue, and he enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles. He held the, ra the rank of Company Sergeant Major when he was deployed to France with 15th Battalion in October 1915. He was killed in action on 6th August 1917, aged 26, and is buried in the Wiltshire Farm Cemetery in Belgium. David Lumsden Newell was born on 12th June 1893, also at Woodland Avenue. He enlisted with the Public Schools Battalion of the Royal Fusiliers and was deployed to France on 15th November 1915. He was killed in action on 13th March 1916, aged 21, and is buried in the Cambrin Cemetery Extension in France. The Newell family, the parents, received war gratuities totaling £28 in late 1919. That equates to £1,375 in current terms for the loss of three sons. The Newell brothers are commemorated on this family memorial in Belfast City Cemetery. The memorial itself takes the form of a cenotaph flanked by two shells. You can just see the shells, one shell here and one half shell here. At the top is a laurel wreath, and inside the laurel wreath are the words, the glorious dead. Just below the wreath are the years 1914, 1918, and between the two years, there was originally um, an attachment, probably of brass, which featured the cap badges of the three regiments, um, with the Royal Irish Rifles being on this side, the Royal Fusiliers being on this side, and the Black Watch being in the middle. Probably doesn't come across particularly well in this um, medium, but if you go up to Belfast City Cemetery and look at it, you can see the shadow of the, the three cap badges. This is probably, undoubtedly actually, my favorite war-related memorial in Belfast City Cemetery, because it's not a memorial with names on it. It's actually been built, constructed, to be a war memorial on which other names happen to have been um, added because the, the details for the parents and other members of the family are below here. But when you look at that, if you took that names panel off and placed it in the middle of a town centre, you would say that's a war memorial. And it's the only one that I'm aware of that is in a cemetery which has so close connections to um, an ordinary or a, a war memorial that you might find in a town centre. The three Newell brothers are also commemorated on the um, Belfast Royal Academy War Memorial. That was designed by Young and Mackenzie, one of Belfast's leading architecture companies. And it was unveiled on Friday the 12th of May 1921 by the Vice Chancellor of Queen's University, the Right Honourable Dr Hamilton. It was dedicated by the Dean of Belfast, the very Reverend Thompson, Thomas Gibson George Collins. Three Belfast companies were involved in the manufacture of the memorial. James Edgar Winter of Shaftesbury Square 
um, carried out the general construction work. So he was the, the mason, he was the guy that did all the, the heavy building. The school crest, which you can see at the top in color, was emblazoned by George Morrow of Clifton Street. The bronze tablet was cast by Musgrave Ironworks on the Albert Bridge Road. Ro Rosamond Prager modeled the sculptures of the two angels with, which flanked the dedicatory panel. The female um, angel symbolizing faith stands above the year 1941, uh, 1914 and has no head covering. Whilst the male, a male angel symbolizing fortitude stands above the year 1918 and is wearing a helmet. And again, um, it's a fairly, fairly large uh, monument memorial and the, the detailing on the angels is, is just exquisite. Again, probably not best not walking around schools with a camera in these days, but it's certainly worth arranging at some stage to have a look at that memorial. St. Silas Church of Ireland, which was on the Old Park Road, it was on the lower part of the Old Park Road, which, which people would call the Bone. The new pulpit was erected in the church um, as a memorial to the 30 men from the congregation who had died in the Great War. The pulpit was made out of white oak by Purdy and Millard of Howard Street in Belfast, with a brass plaque naming the fatalities. The memorial was unveiled on Sunday the 30th of May 1920 by two former church wardens, Mr. James Barlow and Mr. James Thomas Bustard. Both men had lost their only sons in the war. The memorial tab pul pulpit was dedicated by the Right Reverend Dr. Charles Staunton Primrose Grierson, who was Bishop of Down, Connor and Dremore at that stage. The pulpit cost £150 which is approximately seven and a half thousand pounds in current terms. The church building was destroyed during the German air raids of 1941 and the memorial pulpit was lost as a consequence. William Ewart Bustard was born on 8th June 1893 at Mayfair Street in Clifton Ward to James Thomas Bustard and Elizabeth Fulton. Being the eldest of their six children, his father was a power loom tenter and the family was living at Como Terrace on the Old Park Road in 1911. William Bustard was recorded as being a clerk for a stationer. He enlisted with the Royal Irish Rifles and was deployed to France with 14th Battalion. He held the rank of Lance Corporal when he was killed in action on 1st July 1916, aged 23. William Ewart Bustard is buried in Connaught Cemetery at Thiepville in France and commemorated on a family memorial in Belfast City Cemetery. I think off memory, off the top of my mind, top of my head, that's in the Glenalina extension. An illustrated roll of honour commemorating the men associated with the old, old Our Boys Hall in Manor Street off the Old Park Road. It was unveiled on Thursday, 27th May 1920 by Major General the Right Reverend John Morrow Sims, moderator of the Presbyterian Church in Ireland. The roll contains the names of 122 men, 24 of whom died in the war. The roll was produced by Kerry and Thompson of Royal Avenue and featured a sketch of the hall at the top of the uh, department, the coat of arms of the United Kingdom and three watercolour paintings of battle scenes at the bottom of the roll of honour. The Our Boys Hall became part of the YMCA movement um, round about the same time and you can see there you've got a set of Boy Scouts who are there at the unveiling or possibly that's the uniform of the Our Boys Hall, I'm not entirely sure. Arthur Officer was one of the people named on that Roll of Honour and again we have from newspaper reports we have a list of the names of those who served and those who fell. He was born on 28th April 1893 at Shannon Street in Clifton Ward to Arthur Officer and Mar Margaret McCabe, being one of their five children. His father was a doctor and the family was living at Shannon Street in 1911, but had moved to Manor Street by 1918. Arthur Officer Jr. was already a member of the Irish Canadian Rangers, which was a militia unit, when he enlisted on 23rd October 1914. He was initially posted to the 23rd Infantry Battalion 
and was then subsequently posted to the 3rd Infantry Battalion in France in May 1915. He was reported missing on 17th June 1915 during the Battle of Vimy Ridge. His death was confirmed on 21st August 1915. Although his service papers record that he was buried at Duxville in France, he is now com um, commemorated on the Vimy Memorial. And that was quite a, a, a frequent occurrence where men were buried close to where they fell. Um, and although they were marked with crosses, the burial locations were marked with crosses, those graveyards, those uh, burial locations would, would be subsequently shelled and fought over. And as a consequence, the location of individual bodies became lost or the details of where individual bodies were buried became lost. And subsequently, those people, those, those people's names were put on one of the memorials to the missing. And you've probably seen recently on the news where um, when they were building a, a new road, they came, they came across bodies of First World War soldiers who were then be, were able to be disinterred and received um, new burials in an, an established uh, military cemetery. But quite often their names would not be known. So they'd be buried with a headstone saying, a soldier of the Great War, known unto God, if they knew which regiment he belonged to from uniform, uniform scraps, they'd be able to say, put on the details on the cap badge of the regiment. But bodies from the First World War still turn up just about every year. His brother, um, Samuel King, an officer, served with 15th Battalion Royal Irish Rifles and the Royal Army Ordnance Corps. He survived and was transferred to the Class Z Army Reserve on 2nd March 1919. They're both commemorated on the memorial tablet for Agnes Street Presbyterian Church, which is now on display in the Somme Museum at Conlig. Another brother, William Officer, served with 14th Battalion Canadian Infantry, and he was killed in action on 3rd June 1916, aged 28, and is commemorated on the Menangate Memorial in Ypres. So there you've got three members of the one family, all had been part of the our boys hall in in, um, in Manor Street and two of their sons died and one survived and came home. More recently a version of this tablet of this plaque was um, erected as in a, as a poly panel at the junction of Agnes Street and um, Shankill Road and there's also side panels which on which the, the names of all the men from Agnes Street Church who served have been transcribed and it's it's quite appropriate that there is now a memorial on Agnes Street to the men um, from that church. The church still exists, it's now called Emmanuel Presbyterian Church, but as to why they decided to remove the memorial from the church, I don't know. Merview Street Mission Hall, a reading desk in memory of those killed in the war was unveiled on Sunday the 20, 20th of September 1920, this mission hall was associated with the Congregational Church in Donegal Street. The reading desk was unveiled by Captain William Reed and Reverend Johnston Thompson of the People's Hall, a Methodist uh, mission hall, were also present during the unveiling ceremony. The names of the fatalities are carved in the front of the uh, reading desk. They're just about legible even in this newspaper photograph, but again, the names were recorded in a newspaper article relating to the unveiling and dedication. David Craig Bunting was born at Hannah Street on 3rd December 1897 to Robert Bunting and Mary Ann Craig. His mother died on 21st July 1907 at the age of 39 at Hannah Street from septicemia and pneumonia. Robert Bunting married Catherine Wilson of Donor Street on 25th December 1908 at St. Anne's Parish Church. Robert Bunting was employed in a jam making factory and the family was living at Marilyn Street in 1911. David Bunting enlisted with the Royal Inniskilling Fusiliers and was posted to 7th Battalion on the Western Front sometime after, the, after December 1915. He died of wounds on 14th June 1917 aged 19 
and is buried in the Balliol Communal Cemetery Extension at Nord in France. Robert Bunting received a war gratuity of five pounds in November 1919. That's the equivalent of 245 pounds in current terms. On Monday 20th February 1922, this memorial tablet was unveiled in the Downing Street Band Hall to commemorate members of the Ulster Amateur Flute Band who had served in the Great War. The tablet was made of Sicilian marble and it's mounted on a black enamel slate and it was made by Samuel Livingstone of, of Beverly Street, which again is in the Shankill area. The memorial records the names of two members of the band who died, Captain John McMinn and Sergeant Malcolm Grant, and the names of 19 men who served and returned home. The memorial was unveiled by the Reverend W.J. Dunlop, Rector of St. Stephen's Free Church of Ireland at Millfield. The Ulster Amateur Flute Band were prize winners. I've read in the past that they were world champions. They won the world champion at one stage, but I can't recall the details of the year. But just to give you a flavour, this is what the band sounded like. So there you go, there's a wee bit of music to, to um, brighten your day. John McMinn was born on 1st June 1883 at Walton Street in the Clifton um, Ward to Robert McMinn and Margaret Brown. And the family was living at Cumberland Street in 1901. His father was a power loom tenter and John was a linen sample maker. The family was living at Southport Street when John McMinn married Isabella Kirkwood on 8th May 1907 at Falls Road Methodist Church. In 1911 they were living at Manor Street with their daughter Margaret. John was working as a stockkeeper when their son William was born in September 1911. A third child Isabella was born in November 1915. John McMinn received a commission with 14th Battalion Royal Irish Rifles and was a lieutenant when he was posted to the Western Front in 1915. He held the rank of captain and was attached to the 5th Battalion Durham Light Infantry when he was killed in action on 27th May 1918 at the age of 35. John McMinn is commemorated on the Soissons Memorial in France and on the memorial tablet in St Michael's Church of Ireland on Craven Street off the Shankill Road. Isabella McMinn, his um, widow, died on 24th January 1969 at the age of 83 and is buried in Roselawn Cemetery. The headstone also commemorates the death of Captain John McMinn and my thanks to Peter McCabe for the photo of this headstone. It's one of uh, a few headstones commemorating First World War fatalities that are in Rose Park Cemetery. Willowfield Unionist Club. Um, it was built on the Woodstock Road between Cherryville Street and Bryansford Street in 1913. It was flanked by uh, shops on either side. A drill hall in Cherryville Street was opened by Sir Edward Carson on Friday 16th May 1913 and the Willowfield Unionist Club building was formally opened and dedicated on Sunday 30th November 1913. On 11th November 1923, Sir James Craig, the Prime Minister of Northern Ireland, unveiled a tablet which commemorated 64 men from Willowfield Unionist Club who had died in the Great War. You can see here the platform party um, with all the, the flags and decorations and the um, memorial in, in the centre of the newspaper photograph. This is a close up of the memorial itself. And it was made from Royal Oak and was designed by Mr. R. Robinson along classical lines with columns at either side supporting the entablature, which contains a variety of carved elements. The years 1914 and 1919 on either side, so here and here, shield bearing lions at the top, the initials of the club in the middle, and the frieze of interlaced, interlaced flowers representing the countries of the United Kingdom. Roses for England, shamrocks for Ireland, and thistles for Scotland. 
In the centre at the top, you have a flamboyant laurel wreath of Florentine bronze, which surmounts the tablet. Below that are two panels. Again, these are Florentine bronze with the names of fatalities recorded in raised letters. The memorial, the memorial was constructed by McMullen Brothers of Murray's Place off the Ravenhill Road, and the Florentine bronze elements were cast by Musgrave and Company of Albert Bridge Road. The names of the fatalities were listed in the local newspapers, and the names are not in strict alphabetical order. The building fell into disrepair um, as time progressed and was burnt down in, in the 1980s. It is possible that the memorial was lost in the fire, but there are accounts that it was stolen from the remains of the building and sold for its scrap metal value. A modern obelisk memorial near the site of the building contains the same names as those that were on the original, and the names appear in the same order as the historic newspaper reports, i.e. not in strict alphabetical order. And again, um, the newspaper photograph, it's possible to make out all the names from that as well, which means that you've got two sources uh, to confirm the names of the men from the Willowfield Unionist Club. Alexander Dalzell, or Alexander DL possibly, was born on 29th June 1893 at Ivanhoe Street in Cromock Ward to John Dalzell and Mary Jane Key. His father was a carter and the family was living at Willowfield Gardens in 1911. Alexander at that stage was a baker. He was living at Titania Street off the Craigor Road when he signed the Ulster Covenant in September 1912. And he was living at the same address when he married Jane Linus of Woodstock Road on 13th April 1913 at Willowfield Parish Church. Alexander was living at Bradstraw Avenue in Toronto when he enlisted on 28th November 1914. He was deployed to France with the 4th um, Canadian Mounted Rifles in October 1915, and he held the rank of corporal at that stage. John Jane Dalzell, his wife, was living at Woodstock Road during the war years. Following an engagement at Maple Copse on 2nd June 1916, Alexander Dalzell was reported missing, but his death was not confirmed until March 1917. He was 22 years old and he's commemorated on the Menengate Memorial in Ypres and on the Road of Honour for Craig of Presbyterian Church. The memorial to members of the Cliftonville Cricket and Lawn Tennis Club was unveiled in the Cricket Pavilion on Monday 28th March 1927 by Lieutenant Colonel Arthur Brownlow Mitchell. His son, 2nd Lieutenant Arthur Gorman Mitchell, was killed in action on 13th May 1916 at the age of 19 while serving with 2nd Battalion Royal Irish Rifles. Arthur Brownlow Mitchell was a surgeon and he was in charge of the orthopaedic and limbless wing at the UVF hospital on Botanic Avenue. So we're almost back to the start. We started off with a memorial that was placed in the, the limbless wing at the UVF hospital and we're finishing off with a memorial that was unveiled by um, Arthur Brownlow Mitchell, who was in charge of that wing. The base of the memorial is the inscription, They Played the Game, which is also inscribed on the memorial tablet for the North of Ireland Cricket and Football Club. The memorial um, records the names of 15 fatalities, five of whom are commemorated on family memorials in Belfast City Cemetery. The pavilion itself was destroyed in a sectarian arson attack in the 1970s, and it must be assumed that the memorial tablet was lost in that fire. The first name on the war memorial is Winifred Elizabeth de Mesny Atkinson, who is also the first person named on the Belfast Royal Academy Memorial, which was only a couple of hundred yards away from the, uh, from the Cliftonville Cricket Club. Winifred was born on 30th of June 1897 on Cliftonville Road to John Atkinson, who was a linen merchant, and Winifred Mesny Murray. Winifred was working as a voluntary aid detachment nurse when she died of appendicitis at the Waverley Abbey Military Hospital in Farnham. 
Winifred Atkinson is buried in Belfast City Cemetery, but is not classified as a war fatality by the Commonwealth War Graves Commission. She is also commemorated on this wonderful memorial for VAD fatalities in Surrey. The memorial features a sculpture of, of a VAD nurse and is part of the nurse's home act, which was at the branch of the British Red Cross Society. It records the names of 25 nurses who died during the Great War, who were based in the, in, um, the county of Surrey, not all from Surrey. Obviously, we've got um, Miss Atkinson. And that brings this evening's talk to an end. And I hope you um, can just get a feel for the fact that so many memorials that commemorate people who gave their lives for the country have been discarded or have been lost. Some of them admittedly due to enemy action, but most of the memorials that are missing are missing because they were just removed from churches or removed from band halls or removed from hospitals and their value, their not financial value, but their, their, their value in terms of their intrinsic value as a record have been lost through time. And to me, that is a tragedy. Thank you. Nigel, thank you very much for that. That's very good. Um, tell me, Nigel, I saw a post during the week of um, Newton Ard's War Memorial. Um, it was strange. There was something about four war memorials. Where yeah. would you find more information? <laughs> you might find it in a book which Mr. Jim Hamilton was showing us earlier on. That's the very one. <laughs> okay. By coincidence, no, actually, you did you did put a post up about the um, St. Anne's Cathedral, the front of the St. Anne's Cathedral. Yeah. I always thought that would have been a very big war memorial. Is there, Is a, there a bigger, bigger one? one? Mm. Depends on what tense you're using. <laughs> um, Was there a bigger one? In the interwar years, the largest war memorial in Northern Ireland, or Ulster, was not, as, as some people think, the Knocker Monument, but was in fact the, um, the Presbyterian War Memorial, which was on Howard Street. It was a, a home. It provided hostel facilities for young men and women who were coming into Belfast looking for work, and it provided them with uh, secure accommodation at a very reasonable rent for a period of time so they could find their feet and find, um, get their own sort of uh, accommodation. But that was the largest war memorial because obviously it's, it's in three dimensions. It, it, it had a depth to it, it had a height and it had a width. And when you look at it in terms of the area, wasn't the tallest memorial, wasn't the highest, but it was certainly the largest no. in terms of area. <laughs> no, just to tell everybody, I'm sure some people have already got the book already. Um, it's available via History of Ulster, our webpage or our um, From Facebook page. Jay McCabe to everyone, Money Penny also helped raise the DOSH to build the original Stephen McCracken says, I have the same cap badge. Thank you very well much for a very own. interesting talk on a subject of which I have quite an interest in general, giving details about the firms involved in the building or manufacture of the memorial, including some of the designer details. Um, I find it very interesting and adds so much value to the talk. Thank you for that comment. Um, um, Stephen McCracken, brilliant talk. Shame about how many lovely memorials and all that. Yeah, and there's so many that I could have talked about. Um, as well as Balmoral Methodist, where we have a newspaper photograph, the Methodist Church, the large Methodist Church in Donegal Square, their memorial tablet is, the, the location is unknown. The memorial tablet from Carlisle Memorial uh, Methodist Church, again, unknown. Falls Road Methodist Church, unknown. In the Presbyterian Church, you've got Clifton Street, you've got Eglinton Street, you've got College Square. Albert Street was destroyed in a fire in the 1970s. But there's so many others where you just know, don't know when and how Barnabas Church of Ireland on um, Duncairn Gardens, their war memorial was lost in the Blitz. And from a newspaper article, it describes it as being seven feet high and nine feet wide. Now, if you think about that, that must have been absolutely um, Ian Forsyth, fascinating story, sad about the missing memorials, deliberate or otherwise of neglect. And selling some. No, it, it isn't. Um, it wasn't transferred to the um, the new St Andrew's Church. There was also a Church of Ireland in Turf Lodge, which was called St Matthias, 
and again their war memorial is is lost the saint andrew's roll of honor is actually in um saint aidan's church of ireland on Blythe street right. which you um, but yes saint familiar. andrew's the saint aidan's in Blythe street it has the first world war memorial tablet for christ church it has the second world war roll of honor for christ church and the first world war roll of honor for christ church it also has its own memorial tablets and the roll of honor for saint andrews so basically right. all the church of ireland's that were in that general location towards sandy row um, and and yeah. slightly outside sandy row were all brought together into one location which is also a fantastic um war memorial window in in um saint aidan's which is for a member of the church lads brigade from the church but it's well worth um getting yeah. into just to have a wee look around Mark there um had mentioned to me that um he had heard that after the fire at Willowfield Unionist Club, some locals went in and basically took out whatever they could, including the war memorial, which was then sold for scrap. And it just it it breaks my heart really. I mean, I I, I mean, even though we're a hundred years away, it's really upsetting for me to think that people would just take advantage of something like that and think, well, I'll get a few quid for this. Rather than, I mean, if they could have recovered it from the burnt out of the building and taken it down to the Somme Museum, at least it could have been preserved and it would have been there for other people to appreciate. But it's this attitude of chuck it in the bin, chuck it in the skip, which is quite annoying. Okay, Nigel, thanks very much. And this, thank you very much to everybody.